So what we've talked about so far, we talked about humidity and relative humidity, specific humidity, temperature, vapor pressure, and dew point. And I know some of you are thinking, wow, that's awesome. You know, if only somebody could combine all of these onto maybe, say, one easy-to-read chart. And if you have the handouts, this is full size in the back of your handout. This is the psychometric chart. And this is what the drying industry uses, if you don't have an app for it, for everything we do. This is the relationship between temperature, relative humidity, absolute humidity, and vapor pressure. This graphically represents the science behind what we do in structural drying. But then the question becomes, how do we get from all of the science to actually the nuts and bolts of implementing it and getting your insureds or your client's house dry after something goes horribly wrong with it? And for that, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Scott to take the next couple of sections for me. All right. Jason, thanks for giving 110% on that. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. So, um, so as painful as that may have seemed, um, to go through the scientific portion of it, uh, Jason brings up a, a perfect point. And there, you know, there's a lot of folks out there in this industry who have a good grasp on psychrometry. They know how to read the temperature and they can pick up a hygrometer and they can check relative humidity and all those things. But <clears throat> what, I'm, what I quickly learned uh, is that many of them don't know how to apply that when they walk into the residence and you have uh, a flooded situation and now we have to dry that. So um, what I want to discuss is how we take the valuable information that Jason just went through, we take the science of it and now we apply it to the actual drying of a structure. Um, and it all falls back to the four basic principles of drying. Uh, in the industry, we affectionately refer those to as uh, red tea, uh, and that's removing the excess, which we'll get to, promoting evaporation, establishing dehumidification, and then all the while controlling the temperature. And we're gonna discuss each of those, and I think what you'll see as we have this discussion is that the information that Jason talked about is embedded into each of those principles. 